as you wish, Mr. Grant. No, that's all. You may go to bed. See who that is. Yes, sir. Well, hello, Edith. What's the matter? Something wrong? I found these letters in Dick's safe. Read them. Clever woman. She doesn't sign her name. Not on any one of them? Not on any one of them. But read it. It's most enlightening. Charming, isn't it? All the seasons of the year poetically recorded. Winter. My fire. My house. Spring. Spring comes to the love nest. The tree outside the living room window is budding, and I win the bet. The blossoms are yellow. Isn't it beautiful? Two lovers in their sylvan retreats staring at the trees. And now summer. That same summer when I was working so hard for him, scheming, planning, doing everything in my power to help him, he was having a cheap back street affair. Probably there's some other explanation. And her counting the hours until she saw him again, thanking him for the house he bought her with my money? He didn't buy the house. Oh. So you do know about it. I thought you would. Edith, I'm probably asking you the impossible. But my advice to you is to burn those letters. Forget them. Forget them? Forget that you, my own brother, let me go on living with a man who was coming to me from the arms of a common, cheap little... If you don't tell me who she is, I'll find out some other way. I'll get detectives. I'll show them these letters. You wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? I'll make her suffer. Edith. Come here. Sit down. Do you ever hear the name Nora Moran? Nora Moran? This may refresh your memory. What has she to do with it? That's the girl. This woman and Dick? I don't believe it. It's true, nevertheless. You said you wanted her to suffer. Did you ever witness an execution? Why, of course not. Did you ever see the preparations for one? A cold-blooded preparation? From the disposal of a burned-out, lifeless thing that a few moments before the execution was a human being? They begin in the afternoon. Tonight. Yes, we'll get it there by six. She's five foot one. She's five foot one. Okay, five foot one. I've got to shave her head. She didn't eat a thing. You wouldn't either. She's only twenty-one. I've got to keep that. I wonder what she's thinking. Her suffering had been so mute and pitiful that they tried to relieve her. 
Just lie quiet. You'll soon be asleep. Mrs. Watts, are you sure they sent the telegram to Father Ryan? Yes. He'll be praying for you. There might still be a chance for you if you'd only tell why you did it. No. Why won't you tell, dearie? But you could tell me. Not anyone. Gradually, the opiate quieted her body, but her mind was too disordered. And in her confused state, everything became grotesque and unreal. We've all experienced it, and in our helplessness, we call on the one who means protection to us. To Nora, it was Father Ryan. Now is when she was a child. Nora's five years old. She's been with the sisters two years. And she's always been a very good child. Well, there's only one thing that's holding me back. Bless you, honey. I was only saying, I wanted to see how you'd fit on me lap. Darling, come over and try it. We, we got a car. All your own? Sure. Barring a couple of payments. Shh, what's a couple of payments between two good Irishmen like the child and me? Oh, the child and you. It's already the child and you. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Happiness for eight years. But she remembered only the tragedy that ended. I didn't know for hours why they didn't come home. What do you want to do now, Nora? Sinful even to think of it now. But Mother Moran wanted me to... What was that? Learn to dance. She always said that when she could afford it, I could go to a school. Do you want to do that? Yes. I paid all the debts and there's three hundred dollars left. Would it be wrong to use the money for that? No. Not wrong, Nora. That's certainly not the wisest thing. Oh, but I want so much to do it. The money would last long enough until I studied and by that time I could get a job in a cafe or I might even get a job in a show. <laughs> Long hours and hard work until she felt prepared. And although her money was almost gone, she started out like thousands of others, confident of immediate success. There was the glamour of the theater, the lights, and the crowds, intoxicating to her because she now felt herself to be a part of it. There were the stage doors that promised mystery and excitement, and the daily round of booking offices, when she still felt that each new day was to mark the beginning of her success. And then the refusals, endless days, Voices that spoke, nothing today, no experience, nothing today, no, no, you won't do, nothing today. Signs that haunted her, chorus filled, no casting today, chorus filled, chorus filled, until she knew the panic that comes with your last dollar, and the desperate necessity for any kind of work, the failure there until she saw the end. I'm afraid you're too young to work in a circus. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not too young. I'm old. Oh, please let me have it. Please. Well, all right. Report to Paulino at King Brothers Circus. Thank you. Excitement, a job, the sound of the clap, tumblers, acrobats, thrills, excitement, rehearsing what she'd say, afraid someone would beat her there, and then he is dead. 
about the same size as your last partner. All right. Okay. You'll do very nicely. Oh, Mr. Polino. Hmm? I don't have to go in the cage, do I? <laughs> no, no. All you have to do is to wear that outfit and look pretty. And uh, can they miss this stuff. adventure until one night. subconscious mind. She was reliving the events that formed the pattern of her life. Mrs. Watts. No. I'm Sadie. Don't you remember me? No, I don't. Things seem strange. That's because you're dreaming. And so far you've dreamed things just as they happened. But I thought when you got to me, I hadn't changed the dream if you wanted me to. Oh. I'm not giving you the money. I don't understand you. Don't you remember? After you've been with the circus for nearly a year, I found you sitting here one night. I was drunk, but not too drunk to know that you were just about ready to bump yourself off. So I gave you a hundred bucks to get away from the circus in Paulina. Oh, yes, now I remember. You were the only one who was friendly to me. Well, I'm not so sure it was a good thing. That's what I'm talking about. If I hadn't given you the money, you might not be here now in jail, waiting to be electrocuted. But I'm not in jail? I'm here. I guess I'd better get drunk. I can't help you. Oh, but you did help me. 
You gave me money. Where did I go? You went to New York and got a job in a nightclub. Then what did I do? You killed a man. But before that, I was happy. I was happy for the first time in my life. That's where I met him. Give me the money again. I don't care what happens after that. I'll see him again and I'll be happy. Stay another week. May I see you again? Of course. Good night. Good night.
spare me the details of their romance. It's all in there, months of it, while I, like a fool, was slaving for him. Oh, come on now, Edith, please, please. Let's be honest with ourselves. You weren't thinking any more of Dick than I was. Anything that you did, you did for your own social ambition. And to me, he was just a figurehead that I'd groomed for the governorship to further my own political power. When I finally got wind of what was going on, he'd become a damned important figurehead. And with the election only two weeks off, one word of scandal would have ruined us. How did you find out about it? Well, I became suspicious of the trips he was taking to the ranch every Monday and Friday. One day I followed him. I found that he was keeping her in a little house just across the state line in Wilchester, about an hour's drive from here. Then I traced the girl's history. And the more I found out about her, the more I was certain that she had a definite plan. She was just to sit tight until he was the governor, and then collect for the rest of her life. Well, at least you had sense enough to see that. Well, you've read her letters. Do they sound like it? Certainly. They're just the sort of letters she would write to lull his suspicions. Perhaps. Perhaps. Before you judge that girl, picture her lying in her cell, trying in her disordered mind to relive the months she was in that country. Do you think we could get the president to put three Mondays and four Fridays in the week? Why? For those are the days I see you. <laughs> Come over here, dear, will you? I need it. You've been happy here, haven't you, dear? When I was a little girl, we used to say foolish questions deserve foolish answers. <laughs> so heavy, it, it turns on my finger. Don't do it. Why not? I don't know. I don't know! Now you've done it. Is that all you take off? Oh, I'm glad. She has such pretty hair. She heard their voices dimly, seemed to know what they were doing. She was going to die. And the thing she was dying for was about to happen. What is it, dear? What's the matter? I know now. It's the circus. Isn't it? You must leave. You must leave now. I beg your pardon. My name is John Grant. I'd like to see Mr. Crawford. Why, well, he's... I don't bother lying. I know that he's here. Well, funny you finding me here. Well, Miss Moran, do you know Mr. Grant? How do you do? I just dropped in to see Miss Moran's father. He's an old friend of mine. Not in at the moment, I suppose? No. I see. Well, where could we talk? Uh, would you mind if we talked in here? Fine. Fine. Excuse me. Go now, please. 
Don't talk to him. Of course, dear. But you stay out here. Miss Moran's father's been sending her flowers. Well, how'd you find out about this? There's an extra out. An extra? About this? Yes. How could they have got out of it? Well, this isn't even our state. Oh, well, there isn't anything to it anyway. I met her while I was in New York. So when she moved down here, she dropped me a note. Purely a friendly note to call. Every Monday and Friday. With an alibi like that, you don't write the front page. You ought to be in the comic section. Has Edith seen it? I don't know. She can read. Good. What'll I do? Squirm a while. I'll watch. I ought to get something back for my money. Talking like that will help, John. You've got to think of something. All right. You do the thinking, I'll do the talking. The story hasn't broken in the papers yet. You mean you told me I that? I just to... wanted to give you a taste of how you'd feel if I did break. But if you're not out of here in exactly ten minutes, that's what's going to happen. I'll break it myself. I'll break it on the front page of every newspaper in the state, and you along with it. You wouldn't do that, wouldn't I? Let me tell you something. You're running for governor. You're a married man. The fact that you're married to my sister doesn't mean a thing to me. That's her business. But I've spent a lot of time and money building you to where you are. And if you think for a moment I'm going to let you toss it just because you've fallen for some cheap little dame, you're mistaken. She isn't cheap. You bet your life she isn't. She's going to cost you plenty. What do you mean? Figure it out for yourself. Why do you suppose a girl from a New York nightclub would bury herself in a place like this? How do you know she comes from a nightclub? How did I know that she was in a circus before she was in a nightclub? I've got her number. I know her past history. You're crazy. Am I? Well, I'll tell you just how crazy I am. Either you end this thing right now or you're through. You'll go back to being an office. What did you mean about knowing her history? Get her in here and ask her yourself. No, please. No? All right. I'll get her in myself. You talk to me? <laughs> Come in. You heard what was said? Yes, I heard. All of it? I guess so. It's true, isn't it? What? About you being with the circus. The same one that's playing here tonight. Yes, that's right. What was your name then? Same as it is now. Shouldn't it have been something else? Or have there been so many you didn't bother with that? Yes, that's right. There have been so many I didn't bother with that. Men like him who were married. Men... Found guilty of murder in the first degree for said killing. 
and on the 14th day of May, 1933, was sentenced to be put to death. Come, look at her. I don't want to. Come on, look at her. What's the matter with her? She's dead. I don't like the way they fixed her hair. They shaved part of it off. Why? Why did they do that? So the current would go through her head. It doesn't go through her head? It goes through her head, her arms, and her legs. That's a lie. It goes through her head, her arms, and her legs. If you don't believe it, come to the execution tonight. They're going to kill her again. The warden wasn't pleased with the way she died. I won't have it. They can't do that. But they've done it. Don't you understand? She's dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Don't let me go back to sleep again. Please. Help me to wake up. I must go back to sleep. Poor Nan. You were dreaming, weren't you? Yes. Maybe if I walk, I can stay awake. You can't do that. Yes, I can. If you help me. Upon said trial, was found guilty of murder in the first degree for said killing. And on the 14th day of May, 1933, was sentenced to be put to death. Stop it! Make it stop! Why don't you be human? Can't you see she's almost crazy? But I'm supposed to read it. I'm supposed to read it here in her cell. All right, read it here. Can't you read it to yourself? I guess I can do that. Maybe if I just mumble, it'd be all right. Mumble and be damned. What's that? Six o'clock. Tomorrow. At six o'clock that night, Nora wasn't the only one walking the floor. I was in my office listening to the prison whisper. And I realized that I'd been listening to it all day. I didn't know what to think. Dick was now the governor. He promised to refuse a stay of execution. I didn't know whether he'd hold his promise. I didn't know whether she'd stick to hers. What do you mean? What are you trying to tell me? When Dick left that night, I stayed to settle with her. Won't you please go now? As soon as we understand each other. I'll give you what you want within reason. But that settles the account for all time. No future payments, no kickback. You understand? There'll be no kickback, as you call it. And no payments at all. So you can go now. What's your game? I doubt if you'd understand it. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Have you any money? Enough. Enough for what? To take me where I'm going. Who rented this place? He did. Is the rent paid? Till next Wednesday. When are you leaving? On the next train. You might as well take this. It's his. You'd better let me give you some money now. No. But if you change your mind, I'll be at the Carlton Hotel tonight. I sat in a hotel room trying to figure the girl out. 
I couldn't believe she turned down money. But at the end of two hours, when she hadn't called, I decided she wasn't going to. Changed your mind about the money? No. Come in here. Come in here, please. Help me move this. What's wrong? Push it away from the fireplace. What happened? Who is it? Helena. He was with the circus. He's the man I lived with. Been watching the house all evening. Came in after you left. He'd been outside watching and listening. Said he was going to blackmail Dick. He knew all about us. He wanted me to come back to him and help him get money from Dick. Then you? Yes, I, I hit him with that whip. I hit him three times. Three times over the head. What'll I do? You'll wait here like all the police. No, don't do that. Why not? We must keep the police out of this. Wait a minute. I happen to be a district attorney. It's my business to prosecute people who commit murder. If this had happened 40 miles from here in my county, it would be my duty to send you to the electric chair. So if it's in your mind to have me help you get away with this, you may as well save your breath. I didn't know you were a district attorney. I thought you'd be willing to help me to keep Dick out of this. Dick? He is out. I know, but don't you see if they arrest me, the whole thing will come out. He rented this house. He's been coming here for months. There are a dozen different things that'll drag him into it. If the newspapers get hold of it, they'll ruin him. They won't care about me, but he's an important man. They'll tear him to pieces. And his wife along with him. Damn it, why didn't you think of this before you committed murder? He went to bed drunk every night. Who? Helena. Well, what about it? We could take him in your car to where the circus train is loading. Then when we got to the darkest part of the street, we could... Throw him out. Someone with the circus is bound to find him. And they'd find that he'd been murdered? No, they'll just think he's drunk. They found him like that before. What about the wound in his head? When we've thrown him out, I'll put a rock under his head. They'll think he hit it when he fell. They'll think that's what killed him. Nothing doing. Oh, don't! Wait, please. Don't you realize what you're doing? You're destroying everything that has taken you years to build up. It isn't necessary. All I'm trying to do is get Polino away from this house. Suppose I helped you, and you got caught after I left. You mean, would I tell that you'd help me? I wouldn't do a thing like that. Slow up now. Can you manage it alone? Yes. Let me out around the corner. We'll never get away with this. Yes, we will. There's no one inside. Imagine my feelings as I drove away and left her. 
All I could think of was getting out of that town. So I checked out of the hotel and drove home. I've changed my plans, Cato. Bring a hot drink to my room. I went through hell that night. One minute I knew that she was sincere. The next minute, I was certain that I'd walked into the cleverest little trap imagined. No matter how I figured, the answer was the same. If she was sincere, the plan was a thousand to one shot. If she succeeded, she'd collect. If she failed and she'd been lying, she'd talk. And faced with the rest, how did I know but what she'd pin the actual murder on me? It was my word against her. And the very integrity expected of me as a public official would have thrown the balance against me if it were known that I was mixed up. I figured the consequences of what I had done from every possible angle, except the one that actually happened. Mr. Grant? Hmm. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but headquarters on phone. They say it's very urgent. All right, Keto. Hello? Yes? Uh, good morning, Mr. Grant. There's been a murder on a circus train that pulled in here this morning. Pulled in here? Yes. We've got the girl who did it, but we can't get anything out of her nor the circus people. The whole thing's a mix-up. Yes, I'll come right down. If you people are trying to shield this girl, you're going to regret it. Was this man dead when you found him in the street? Was he? Don't ask me. He was drunk. If I was drunk, how is it you don't know? Well, I was thinking of something else. It's quite apparent that you were both drunk. Did you put him to bed on the train? Did you? Did you? What do you mean, did I? What was you doing all the time? Well, I... Uh... Go on, I'm waiting. She's the one. Yes, so I gathered. Did you see your husband and his friend bring Polino on the train? I did not. I've seen him drunk so many times I wouldn't have noticed it. Did any of you see him? Did they? Don't ask me. I was thinking of something else. That's enough. We'll get the girl. Have the prisoner brought in. Which one of you met the girl? We both did. You say she hasn't been with the circus for some time? About three years. When you met her, was she going toward the train or away from it? <coughs> beer. I bet there was drinking beer. <laughs> you keep your pants on. A lot you got to say, Roaring Drunk, yourself. She was going toward the train. Why, if it isn't little Laura, says I, when I saw her. I saw her first. She bumped into her. <coughs> Staggered, more likely. You shut up. Now listen. You people wait in the outer room. Come in. God bless you, darling. Sit down, Miss Moran. You admit killing Paulino? Yes. How did you kill him? I told you, I hit him over the head with a whip. What did you do with the whip? I threw it away. Where? From the train. Why did you kill him? That's my business. But it all so happens to be the state's business. I've told you I killed him, isn't that enough? This thing has been going on all morning. Suppose you let me talk with her alone. This is the district attorney. It's my duty to tell you that until you get a lawyer, you don't have to answer any questions you don't want to answer. You can ask me questions, but I won't tell them any more than I told you. What happened? I ran into those women. Shh. Were you close to the body when you ran into them? No. 
I put a rock under his head, and then I went back to my bag. While I was around the corner, I heard old Jake and Miller coming along. They stumbled over him. They were so drunk, they didn't know he was dead. I watched them drag him onto the train. Well, why in the name of heaven did you get on the same train? Couldn't help it. While I was watching them drag Polino away, those women bumped into me. It scared me so when they recognized me, I went to pieces. I don't remember much until I came to and the train was moving. How did they pin it onto you? Police did that. Circus people tried so hard to hush up my past with Polino, I guess they overdid it. They all think I killed them on the train during the night. And of all the places in the world, the train had to pull in here. Do you realize that I've got to prosecute you? Well, what difference does that make? Somebody else might trace it to the house in Wilchester. You'll know how to keep Dick out of it. You mean you're going through with this? I killed Polino. I did it to save Dick. And you helped me to keep him out of it. Well, why should I turn now and undo everything we've done? It would ruin Dick. It would ruin you. It wouldn't help me. I'm still guilty of murder. All right. You're guilty of murder and I'm the prosecuting attorney. That's the way it stands. That's the way we're going to go through with it. And let me tell you something else. If you are doing this in the hope that Dick Crawford as governor will grant you a pardon, you may as well forget it. Because that man would sacrifice anything or anyone to satisfy his ambition. You know the rest of it. She went through the entire trial without a word in her own defense. Prosecuted by a man who was as guilty as she was. Sentenced to die by an unsympathetic jury and still never a word. Well, what of it? She was guilty. Oh, I certainly don't condone what you did, but it wouldn't have done her any good to drag you into it. Wouldn't have done her any good? Why, any lawyer who knew the whole story could have built up such a case for that girl that Dick would have been run out of the state. I would have been sent to prison for life, and she would have walked out of that courtroom as free as air. Why, think of the case. The girl is being kept by a man in high public office. She commits murder for him, and the district attorney turns around and helps her cover up the murder, and then prosecutes her. And furthermore, the murder was not committed in this state. This state had no legal right to try her. I had no legal right to prosecute. What difference does it make which state tried her? She committed murder. And as for her saying nothing in the courtroom, it's perfectly obvious she did that, expecting Dick to get her off. But the one thing in his favor is that he didn't let it influence him when he was faced with his duty. He had the courage and honesty to refuse to save her in spite of who she was. This state had invested him with certain powers and duties. And I'm glad that he at least lived up to that trust. Edith, are you making a campaign speech or just being a damn fool? Like most wives in your self-righteousness, you refuse to recognize any kind of love but your own. You never understood Dick. Neither one of us ever tried to understand him. He was just something that we kicked about between us to satisfy our own purposes and ambitions. We never considered whether he might want what we offered him. We simply forced him into it. You always made him feel that he was the weaker. You made him look up and be dependent upon you. Nora worshipped him. In her eyes, he was a great man. She never questioned him. She never asked for anything more. He didn't offer. And through her love, he attained, or I think he attained something that you or I will never experience. Edith, I want to read you a letter. It's from Dick. Sit down. It starts simply, John, I'm going away with Nora. Away? That's how he puts it. You would call me insane if you knew what had happened to me tonight. And my relating it to you may seem an attempt to justify myself. I don't know. But I ask you to visualize the early hours of the evening. Next three, read all about it. Did you want me to? You tell me what he wants to and I'll appreciate it. Shall I go back and do it? No, leave it alone. Governor denies
I tried to shut out the thought of Nora, her faith in me, the happiness we had known. Her happiness in those first few months. But her voice, memories of her, kept coming back. Stay another week. May I see you again? Of course. I sent for you. Would you come to me? Anywhere. The stove works. And the radio works. And the fireplace works. It's so lovely to have a house with everything that works. I can't stand it. Oh, you darling. You think we could get the president to put three Mondays and four Fridays in the week? Why? For those are the days I see you. Or have there been so many you didn't bother with that? Yes, that's right. There have been so many I didn't bother with that. Men like him who were married. Men... When I left, my actions were those of a stupid schoolboy. Driving away, I began to realize it. How could I pass judgment on Nora? I was a married man, offering her nothing but the question of the security of a house, part of my time. And I knew that no matter how many men there had been in her life, there was only one now. I went back. Someday, but I didn't think it was going to be so soon. Don't listen to him. Don't talk to him. Go away, please. Hey, how much is she worth to you? Exposure terrified me. I imagined things. There's no one out there. But I saw a face at the window. You imagined it. Perhaps. I don't know. Oh, my God, Nora. But it wasn't your fault. You did it in self-defense, dear. If you hadn't done it, he would have killed you. But I'm the only one who knows that. 
And when they find out about us, they won't believe anything I have to say. There's no way out. Oh, but there is a way, if you only go. I leave you to face this? I wouldn't have to face it. I have a plan. If you'll only leave and trust me. Can't you understand why I'm asking you to do this? Don't you realize that it isn't killing him that will ruin you? It's me. The months we've spent here. They'll take those months from us and spread them across the front page of every newspaper. They'll make them ugly and cheap instead of what they were. I'm not asking you to be cowardly. I'm asking you to let me keep the only happiness I've ever known. You'll go, won't you? No. Yes. No. I don't ask you to believe what happened next. I simply say it happened. Don't do that. Nora. What are they doing to you? Nothing, dear. They're hurting you. You're frightened. What is there to be frightened of? Death. There's nothing to fear in death. Father Ryan is with me now. I want you to hear what he's saying. And remember it always. It's the prayer for the dead. No, I don't want to hear it. Don't make me hear it. But it's beautiful. Listen. The eternal rest give to them, O oh Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Eternal rest and perpetual light. Is that frightening? No. Then think of it that way. Think of me that way. I can't. All I can think of is that you're dying for something I did. I'm not dying for something you did. I'm dying for all the good things you're going to do. And I'm dying rather than give up something that was precious to me. My life with you. I could have life with you if I told the truth. If I had the courage to tell the truth, I'd be free. They might put me in prison, but I'd be free. I'd be free of Grant. What of your wife? You can't do that to her. She's like him. They're both alike. Dominating, scheming, planning my life. And they always win. I wanted to pardon you, but he wouldn't let me. Why do I say you wouldn't let me? I could have done it. I can do it now. I can phone now and stop it. I can sign an unconditional pardon and you'll be free. What's free, dear? To go out and struggle. And perhaps no more men like Polina. To go on day after day knowing that somewhere in the world you're beginning to hate me. Why should I hate you? Because people change. What will she be 15 years from now? Just someone who can put you behind the bars any time she wants to. Do you want to go through life waiting for that to happen? Let her die. That was his voice. I didn't think that. He said it. You heard him, didn't you? I wouldn't want you to think I felt that way about you. I know you wouldn't change. You understand, it was his voice. Don't let me die because you're afraid. Let me die because it's my destiny to die. Let me feel that in dying I'll make it possible for you to go on. You said there was no one there. You looked and you said there was no face at the window. You said I imagined it. You did. And what's he doing here? If he saw me, why doesn't he say something? Why doesn't he come out in the open? What's he waiting for? There's no one there. Yes, there is. And I know what he wants. He's waiting. He's waiting until I let you die. And then I'll have to kill him to keep him from telling. That'll be three murders. The first wasn't murder. You did it in self-defense. If I let them kill you, it'll be murder. And then I'll have to kill him. That'll be three. The first wasn't murder. And the second one hasn't happened. The first wasn't murder, and I can stop the second. I'll stop it now. I'll stop it now. Stop it. Stop the execution. I'm the governor, and I say stop the execution. I did it, do you hear? I killed him, and you can't execute her. I did it. I did it, Nora. At first, I couldn't understand her going so quickly. And then I looked at the phone. It was dead. Nora was dead.
Did she know that I had tried? I think so, because her voice came to me, quiet, reassuring. There's nothing to fear in death. Listen. Eternal rest give to them, O oh Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Eternal rest and perpetual light. Is that frightening? I couldn't have put those words in her mouth. She must have been here. While I can still hear her saying, Eternal rest give to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. It ends there. Or does it begin? I wonder.